Hey there, my fifth grade artists. Um, we're going to be starting a new project. It's going to be the um, rodeo art project. So uh, the way that works is we participate in a contest every year where I submit 10 pieces from the students to the district and then the uh, Houston rodeo comes out and they judge uh, the artwork that is submitted and they um, give you prizes and they take it to uh, the 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 Houston Rodeo if they think it's good enough. Um, so I need you guys to try your hardest and do your best. Um, so the theme of the rodeo is always Western. Um, because of that, we're gonna do some Georgia O'Keeffe inspired um, cowboy hats. Georgia O'Keeffe, um, she's a New Mexico artist. Um, she a lot of she did a lot of still lifes and landscapes and uh, with watercolor. She used lots of really uh, pretty pastel -y, um also um kind of bright colors in a, a a landscape that would normally be kind of muted um so we're going to be making some cowboy hats with some wildflowers in them and um so what you're going to need you're going to need um some paper preferably watercolor paper but if you don't have it that's fine um you're gonna need an art board or a piece of cardboard would work too. Um, just make sure it's a little bit bigger than your paper. Um, you're gonna need some painter's tape. I mean, it's not a necessity, but it helps. Uh, some water, your watercolors. If you don't have watercolors, you can use um, just regular paint instead or you can use markers and or you just make sure they're washable markers and um, when you put it on the paper, you can use uh, a paintbrush and wet it, and you can bleed those uh, watercolors to make it look like, um, or you can bleed you can bleed those markers to make it look like they're watercolor. That's a, a thing you could do instead. Um, you're gonna need a pencil, a flat brush, and a round brush. Um, so uh, to begin, we're gonna start by drawing our hat with our flowers. So let's get started with the drawing. I want you guys to take out your pencils. Um, and we're going to start with the bill of the hat. The bill of the hat is going to be an infinity sign. So uh, we're going to make it nice and large on our paper. We want it to take up a big portion of our paper. We want our hat to take up a big spot of our paper, okay? So an infinity sign also looks kind of like an S um, or a number 8. If we continued this line, it'd make a number 8. Okay, then we're going to do a straight line going up. Um, it doesn't have to be a big line. Um, and then you can round out that part right there. All right, and then we're going to do a curved line, just a slight curve like this. And then you're going to um, do a, a straight line going across until you get about halfway, maybe before, a little bit before halfway um, at this bill part. Then you're going to um, bring that line down, okay? And you want to keep these edges kind of rounded. Then we're going to make the ribbon on the hat and it's going to go across like that. And then another one going across just like this. Very simple, easy to do. Uh, there's our cowboy hat. Oh, and we need to put a little line there because there's always a groove in those cowboy hats. Okay. Alright, so in in the ribbon part, I want you guys to put a pattern in there. You can do any type of pattern you would like. I'm going to do this little triangle pattern or zigzag pattern. And then I'm going to put little um, dashes going across here just to add some more interest to my work. Here we go. And then I'm going to put some dots in here. You guys can do any type of pattern you would like inside of that uh, ribbon. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's get started with our flowers. 
Um, let's start with a daisy. I'm gonna put my daisy right here. I'm gonna start with a circle and then I'm gonna do like a bunch of teardrops for those petals or ovals. Teardrops or ovals, any of those would work. There's my nice daisy. Then we're gonna do a rose. Some of you guys might be scared hearing that. A rose is pretty easy to do. It's an implied rose. You just put a wonky looking circle, a goofy looking circle right here. And then you're going to bring a line around about halfway around that circle like this. Another weird looking line. Then you do the same thing like so, like that. And you just keep doing this until you're satisfied with the way it looks. Uh, make it rounded. So that's a nice looking rose for me. I think I'm happy with it. I'm going to make a little stem coming off right there. I'm gonna give my daisy a stem coming out right here. Okay, now we're gonna put some wheat in here. So I want you guys to do a nice big line. Mine's going back behind my rose, so I'm, I'm, draw, I'm cutting the line. And then you're gonna put a teardrop at the top here, or an oval. And then you're just gonna do a bunch of those going down that stem. This is making some wheat. Or it could be lavender. Lavender is a Texas, or I don't know if it's Texas. Lavender is a wildflower. All right, then we're gonna do a, a stem of berries, and you're just gonna um, bring out a line, and then do a bunch of random lines like this. And then at the point of each of those lines, you're gonna do a circle. Just like that. So there's our first set of flowers. Um, we're gonna repeat what we did on this side over here. You guys can do as many roses and daisies and whatever else you'd like right here. Okay, once you have drawn your um, cowboy hat with all your flowers, we're gonna tape it down on our, um, our artboard or our cardboard. Um, if you have an artboard with a little clip like this, I like to tape it on the opposite side of the clip. And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, so the purpose of taping this down is to give it a nice clean border. Um, so, so like a professional way to uh, create art is it always has a clean border. And that's why we use our painter's tape. And our painter's tape is good to use because it won't tear up our paper once we take it off. Um, masking tape will tear up the paper, duct tape, scotch tape, any of the other stuff, but painter's tape it won't tear up our paper. So go ahead and tape your, um, your painting down. Um, tape, tape all four sides down and make it a clean border. Don't just tape it sloppy. Like You need to make it nice and, and uh, straight when you're taping it down. Okay, so as you can see, I have taped my painting down on my board. It's nice and uh, the borders are nice and straight. It's taped down, um, not, I wouldn't say precisely, but it's taped down neatly. Um, so uh, then we're going to prop our board up slightly. It helps a lot when you have your uh, board kind of on a, a tilt whenever you're uh, watercolor painting because the gravity will help you with that. Um, so uh, watercolor is a very expressive, loose way of painting. It's not as precise as acrylic or oil painting. So I want you guys to have fun and use lots of rich colors and um, kind of play around a little bit and explore. Uh, what you like to do with watercolor. Um, okay, so um, one thing I like to have uh, while I'm watercoloring or painting at all is a little scrap piece of paper. The scrap piece of paper can help you a lot in the long run. Um, sometimes your paints and watercolor are a lot darker than they would appear on the paper. So it's nice to have it there so you kind of know what you're getting yourself into before you put it on your project. You see that is super dark in the palette, but when I put it on the paper, it's a lot lighter. 
Um, you could also play around if you're a little nervous about um, putting that watercolor on your paper. You can play around on the scrap paper a little bit Oops. Uh, with different techniques before you um, actually do it to your paper. So uh, one thing about watercolors is um, there's lots of different ways to apply them. You can be real messy with them. You can be real clean with them. You can do lots and lots of layers with them. Um, there's lots of different ways to play around with watercolor. That's why I kind of want you guys to explore and have fun with it. I like to have this little rag here to kind of clean off my brush as well, my paint rag. Um, sometimes if you don't clean off your brush really well between colors, it gets really uh, muddy and nasty looking. Um, there's another trick. I don't know. I, I doubt a lot of you guys have it, but there's this masking fluid you can use. Because um, there's no white in watercolor. Like acrylic, if you paint over the paper, that's okay. But in watercolor, if you want something to be white, you can't touch it with the color. You have to make sure that the paper stays white. Because there is no white in watercolor. <clears throat> So that's one scary thing about it. Um, so I'm going to start. Georgia O'Keeffe, um, she has a very um, rich, she layers a lot. Um, she uses a lot of bright colors. Um, they're more muted, but they're like colorful. They're not um, dull, you know, um, her paintings. So we're going to do that with our, our cowboy hats. Um, the more water you use, the lighter the color is going to be. The less water you use, the darker the color. You can also bleed the colors out. Um, so I'm going to start by making... I'm going to use blue. I'm going to start in... Uh, I'm gonna start in this rose here, and I'm gonna um, just put a little touch of blue in the center here, and then I'm gonna dip my brush in some water and clean it off, and I'm gonna use that paint that's already there, and I'm gonna drag it across like this, and I'm not being exact. You see how I'm kind of going outside of the lines? I'm gonna put a little more blue in here just to kind of make a variation of the color. And then I'm gonna go in with some yellow. I you With watercolors, you have to get your brush wet and then go into the color. Um, I'm gonna go right up where I ended the blue with some yellow, like this. Um, so Texas has Um, a song. It's called The Yellow Rose of Texas. So I'm going to try to make this rose as yellow as possible. But I'm going to add a few pops of color as well. I have two yellows. I'm going to use both of them. Just to make a variation. And um, when you put paint on the paper, you can drag it around um, to make a, a value or different shades of that color. I have like this yellow ochre. Usually this is used for skin tones, but I'm going to use it in my rose. I'm just going to kind of loosely place it along the lines. Just real loose. Be real loose and free with your, um, your artwork. That's one of the um, beauties of watercolor. It allows for this loose, um, fun, relaxed way to uh, paint instead of being so tight and restricted about what you're doing. I need some water, just going with some straight water and kind of blending this, making these lines less harsh. Um, I don't like harsh lines in my watercolors, but you might. I mean, that's fine if you like it that way.
I'm trying to give you guys a chance to like express yourselves and um, do things how you would like to do them. I'm going to do some green for the stems. Maybe some brown in there as well. Maybe a little purple in that stem. Oh, that's brown. Um, I don't have any purple, so I'm going to have to make it. <laughs> so, uh, red and blue make purple. You guys should know this from our last lesson about color. Red and blue make purple. I'm just going to mix it in this tray. Here. Put some purple in here. See, uh, stems normally aren't purple, but because we're we're painting kind of free, I'm gonna do it like this. Um, so have fun and paint your little um, cowboy hats how you would like. Make them colorful, fun. Um, play around with the watercolors. See what you guys can come up with. Layer them blot them uh you could even use like a sponge to apply it or you could use a rag to apply the watercolors um have fun okay once you guys have finished your um your painting you can go back and it's dried um you can go back over all your pencil lines with a black marker or with a black pencil like colored pencil um, and it'll help bring out your drawing a little better, but, um, you see how free and loose the, the, uh, the watercolors are. Um, I will show you the end product after my watercolors have all dried so that you can see, uh, what it should look like in the finale. This should... Okay, so this should be the uh, final result after you go over your um, pencil lines with a darker color. I went over it with this uh, black uh, color pencil. Color pencil works best whenever you're going over a watercolor. Um, you don't have to use black. You could use blue or red or something else. Uh, I just wanted to use black. Um, but go ahead, have fun, play around a little bit, and then send me your end results. All right, until next time, bye.